Well, last week you heard the start of Janelle's story about how God planted her in these villages in Kenya. The things that God has been doing since then, Bubba Watson holding a fundraising concert, the money going to build a hospital over in these rural regions and the possibility of how life could change if things would continue. But the hospital is now at a standstill. So let's pick up that story that we had last week and tell me, give me, give me a pictorial view of what it's like over there at this point. You've got the hospital, you've got the villagers, you've got the sadness and the hopeless and despair situations. Right, and over there, they see this huge hospital, stoned hospital that one man chipped every stone by hand. Hmm. And we built it, you know, stone by stone. And they see it sitting there. And so then you have the corruption of the religious sect of saying it's a morgue. There's hmm. no life going in hmm. it. So it must be a morgue for the dead. So they're trying to ruin the name of Jesus Christ by it sitting empty. And so that came on top of it. And so you see Satan trying to come in and stifle it, but through the power of Jesus Christ, we go verbatim face to face with who's uh, saying those things, and God just kind of takes it all away. And so with the life that is happening, we own seven and a half acres, that's our compound. And so around that hospital is, we have a 172 student school, which, we, we teach the kids that can't afford it. They can't afford 30 shillings. They can't afford, so come and hear and come and hear the word of God. And so, you know, what is going on is life all around that hospital, but everybody will say, oh, you're the blue roof building. That's how they identify. So you have this big elephant sitting here and nothing going on, but it's okay, God's still moving. Well, God has a timetable that's different than that's ours. Right. Of course, we always want to see things happen. We think we know when things need to happen, yet God is moving and working. In the time that you started your annual trips mm -hmm. to Kenya, how are you seeing God working? We know God's not done, mm -hmm. but what are the things you've already seen happen? We have, everybody always says, well, you go over and like over 4,500 people have gotten saved in nine years. So Janelle, are you discipling them? How's this going, you know, and, and you know, an evangelist can't disciple, but Benson, who is the pastor there, does disciple. Our churches do disciple everybody. And so this year, God reiterated, this man traveled seven miles, which doesn't seem a lot, but if you're doing it on foot or whatever. So he came to me and I said, Fred, I remember you from my first year. Yeah, and we hooked up and everything. And, and he says, Janelle, I came to tell you, when we do, we do open air crusades, and so we go and we just like Billy Graham does them in the big thing. He was one of them, he's somebody that I totally love. And so we do crusades with Jesus Christ. And this man, this boy, had put enough shillings in his pocket to make, commit suicide with their brew. If you drink their alcohol, you're done. And so he wanted to commit suicide. But through our speakers, he kept hearing Jesus Christ, the word of God, Jesus Christ. And he said he was drawn. And he came and he got saved. I got to pray with him. And so that kid walked to this other pastor's house with his pastor, so it was legit, and he says, I am now a pastor. And so that's what I'm seeing. I can tell you 500 stories of how it's God who draws all men into himself. And so we just walk in that, of how God draws people from everywhere to be healed, to be saved, to have their lives changed. There's a girl at Rudolph Foods that sends money every, every month for a, a lady, Ann, who's paralyzed from the waist down. Her husband left her because she could not provide. And so, so then to see her sit in a mud hut, and nobody knows her life, nobody knows it, but God did. And now she is being provided for by God. That's what I'm saying. So you've been, God placed you in a place that was full of corruption. Mm -hmm. He gave you strength to stand up amidst that corruption mm -hmm. and keep going. Right. And then the next step that God is, is, is going to use is the medical realm. Mm -hmm. How will their lives change when, a hosp when that hospital is in working order, mm -hmm. when the pipes are in there, when the money has been provided to finish this? How are their lives going to change? Their lives, the, the biggest thing is that they're going to know that Jesus Christ 
knows their ever need. And we always tell them his eyes are never off of you. And when they realize, they really realize that God sees their need. And so then you're going to see, we have a man that is right across the dirt road that the daughter would come over and ask for medicine, ibuprofen, whatever, because here she was beating her dad and asking for medicine. This is what goes on. But if we can give them the provision of health, of even help psychologically, of what's going, somebody that that man could tell us, I'm being beaten. Things are going on that we, you know, I have dealt with mothers that have had their, the father broke the beer bottle and scraped her skull, broke her back. This is what people are dealing with and they have no outlet. They just have to keep taking it. But if we can give them a facility of help and hope in Jesus Christ and the empowerment to live in freedom. Because this is more than just a hospital, isn't it? It's, Here in the United States, we might think of a medical facility as just a place you walk into, but this is a medical mission facility. That's right. So how do we help next? What are things that people can be doing to get on board with you and uh, to be involved in this? The biggest thing, as I always say, is obey the Holy Spirit. Again, I don't market Jesus Christ. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, then you obey him. Because then I know there's going to be spiritual power on your dollar. And I don't want a dollar without spiritual power. I don't want to. It's too sacred. And so whatever God tells you to do, you do. And if you obey him, then I obey him. Then we're going to have the movement of God in Africa. And it's not going to be on a pill. It's not going to be on, on a physician. It's going to be on the Holy Spirit. If somebody wants to contact you, is your website the best way to find you? What, what would be the source you'd like them to use? The website's the easiest. And for the older people that, that don't know, how, you know, maybe doesn't have a computer, then just ask your pastor. You know, I heard this chick on WTLW and, and, and I need to get a hold of her. Call the station. Absolutely. Because yeah. to me, the, the older people are the ones that have the wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever. And so, you know, we, we need to say, you know, you don't have a computer, just call somebody. Call the station and, you know, Shell can get me in touch with, you know, so whatever. Yeah, absolutely. If you call us here at TV44 and say, I need to find Janelle Taviano, we will connect you with her. We will make sure that it happens. And how about prayer needs? How can people be praying? for everything that's taking place, not just in your ministry, mm -hmm. but in the things that you know are happening there. I, the things that we don't recognize, you've mm -hmm. walked there, mm -hmm. you've stood in those mud huts, you've seen the heartache in those mothers mm -hmm. who are sending their kids off. How can we be praying? The, the biggest thing is that, that the word of God is truth and that the individuals over there adhere to the truth. I always go over and speak, is this cultural truth or is this biblical mm -hmm. truth? And once they attach themselves to the truth of Jesus Christ, they will be able to live in freedom and know God will tell them how to get out of it. God will give them the strength. And, and, and again, it's the truth, the truth of Jesus Christ on Kenya. All right, the truth of Jesus Christ on Kenya, Janelle Taviano, Unrained Ministries. The website again is Unrained. Dot com, incredible things that God has birthed over there. Janelle probably never, ever, ever would have imagined it would happen. Yet God knew all along that it would. All right, what an incredible story with more to come. Isn't it great when God is working and we know he's not finished yet? Please join me in praying for Unrained as God continues to move in that region. Back to you.